more! So this is like, you know, your brother, and I'm guessing now then that um, the sister is you, obviously. So is that like, you know, the way that you were dealing with his, you know, his temper or like, you know, the arguments, like, is that basically t totally reflective of, of how it was for you as well? It was reflective, but I didn't want to make that part too autobiographical. Well, it was a long time ago. You know, I, I couldn't remember exactly how we got into those fights. Um, altercations but I can remember where they stemmed from you know so it was more of a character and, and I wanted it to be developed from there so we did you know write the scenes and they're those are fictional you know but it, it's I think it's relatable with sibling rivalry and love um, it's a love-hate relationship and so Diane who plays Rose and Dylan I'm sorry Brandon who plays Dylan um, they had a lot to offer so we talked a lot and a lot about characters and a lot about the emotions and wanted to be able to play to their strengths in those. I mean, clearly our, our mutual friend, Brandon, um, we met Brandon uh, on set of Everything Before Us, and I think that's probably where you met him too. Yeah. Um, and in that, when he played Seth, he was kind of a fiery character as well. Did that kind of inspire you to cast him or, or um, maybe just talk about what, what the choices were in finding your characters? Yeah, I mean, I go into this, I was very determined to cast right, you know, especially for an Asian American story. And so I want to go wide and far. When I first thought about the story, I didn't want to write it without knowing it could be played by actual people. So I wrote it because I was like, oh, I know Brandon Sue who exists and he's great. <laughs> <laughs> and like on and off the set, he like, you can see how talented he is because as a person, he's the sweetest, most funniest person and very, very smart. In my mind, I was like, oh, I, I cast it when I was writing it. Brandon was Dylan in my mind. And so luckily when I was writing the story, I didn't have to think about my brother per se, you know, cause that is, it's very personal. So I thought about like Brandon being this new character. When casting for Rose, we auditioned a ton of people, but early on, I had this like fundraising party. My friend Lee, who's also a director, came and, and she asked me what the story was. And I told her and, and she was like, oh my God, okay, we have to do this right. She had introduced me to her partner, who's also a director. He had recently worked with Diane on a TV show. Um, and she was currently at that time um, working on Warrior, shooting Warrior. And so he introduced me to her and linked us up um, for us to talk. And because they felt strongly that like she, she was a unique actor who fits the role. Yeah, with, with Brandon, um, obviously like his physicality is, is so evident on screen, but with, with Rose, with Diane, you can see that she can definitely hold her own as well. Like there's a presence that, um, that she shows in her reactions that is still um, has a lot of weight and it's almost like she knows the routine to go through in order to calm her brother down. And um, that definitely comes through even without without any dialogue. Continuing down with the casting, um, you know, there's another amazing performance with Ra Canel, and I'm assuming that she's your mother's story. She's this, uh, a Mexican woman and she's telling her story with her relationship with, you know, her son and, um, you know, across the border. What t take us through the process of, of, I guess, telling your mom's story or transforming it for this uh, more focused Mexican story? I felt that my mom's story was, is very universal um, in the way that a lot of people are doing their best. They want to protect their children, so um, they do back-breaking work. And, and they sacrifice so much for, for their kids. Um, and so I, I feel like that goes into many communities. And when we casted Raconel, um, she was perfect. Her, her own story was so paralleled with uh, Celine's story. And when she read it, she just cried and she told me her life story, which is crazy. She has an insane story, but similar of her struggle coming to America, um, pursuing her dreams and 
obstacles she faced. She just fit in like a glove. I thought the choice with Raquel May was really effective because, like you said, it is a universal feeling of family, of、uh, family trying to look out for each other. And usually, that doesn't mean that they know how to do that. It just They go off instinct, right? And so much of the short is shows instinct, and and in her case, like a maternal a p- maternal sense to show comfort,、um, even when it it might be a lie. It was nice to show that across different communities and cultures that we have this bond with our with our family. We're releasing this short in a very, I guess, unique time of the world and of just where things are at for Asian Americans in、uh, in this country,、um, with the pandemic and with rising violence against Asian Americans. Um, and this wasn't like by design. It's not like we like sought you out because of this. Like, but I do think that it is,、um, you know, very important to show a different side of what Asian America is like. I guess you know you have a lot of the crazy rich and you know、uh, the model minority myth of that most Asians are upper middle class, highly educated, wealthy, whatever. How important was it to for you to show this other side of what the Asian community can look like? It was very important. At that point, I hadn't seen anything that I I can actually relate to. Like I had said,、um, there was a lot of upper middle class, and and I felt like a lot of us weren't necessarily that way. You know, a lot of us have very unique stories of、um, how our families came to be, how they came to America, how we have、um, adjusted or not. And so, telling the story, you know, when people kept asking for comps. You know, comps like as in films that were the same or mixing films together, it was very hard. You know, I was like, I don't know another movie, but now I can. You know, there's a couple out there that I can maybe pull together. So it was important to tell the story because every point of the process, it was relevant in different ways. Back then, it was the Trump era, right? So it was all about. Immigrant families, children of immigrants,、uh, minorities in the country, and then when it came out in film festivals,、um, it transitioned into BLM、um, when that was happening, and it felt relevant about telling our voices. And then now with COVID and with、um, a lot of these attacks that are happening,、um, it's also relevant. So it's interesting to see how it's continuously relevant in different ways. You know, I, I wanted to show a realized Asian American story and character who maybe didn't follow the rules and tried to follow the rules. You know, someone who who had a lot inside because we don't talk a lot about mental illness either in our community, and and I felt that that was important to be honest about it because it's very human. That's beautiful, and that's why we're so grateful that you know you are sharing this short, this piece of art with、uh, with us, and then you know with our with our viewership, because、um, yeah, it's, it's stories that need to be heard, and that we might not be able to write personally, and and I think that's the, that's the whole point of Wong Fu Presents is that we know that there are a lot of amazing filmmakers and amazing stories that are untapped or、um, that don't get enough attention, and and we we want people to to feel seen, and we want these stories to be heard, and. We want to represent more people because obviously Asian American or Asian in general is like it's it's that's such a huge group and not one film, not even a dozen films can cover everything, right? So thank you for allowing us to to have these these conversations and talk about these topics、yeah. uh, through your through your film. The story, the characters, they they still resonate in in probably a more even a closer way now、um, in in our current atmosphere, and、um, it's important to see stuff like that. So we want to thank you. Have your brother and your mom seen the final film, and like, has it? How, how has that、um, affected the relationship? They both have, and I think、um, it, it's it was really powerful for my brother to see it. I I got、um, a a group of friends. I went to Austin. You know, we got to rent out the theater across from the Jack in the Box where it happened, and where oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't on purpose. Ground zero. <laughs> There, it, was, it wasn't on purpose. That sounds very <laughs> intentional. <laughs> it was on purpose. That was because Jack in the Box. But it's because it was a Jack in the Box that was right next to the the radio, television, and film building where my undergrad was. And so I was literally building right across from it. You know, because things weren't very far from each other. So I was like, oh, this is so. Just bring it back to where it was and to watch it like right across the street from it. And you know, it was like what was it? It was like twelve. Years 
10, 12 years after the incident. And, you know, I sat with him and I've never been so nervous in my life. Um, and, and it was very uh, rewarding just knowing that he felt seen. He's constantly misunderstood because people see him, he, they see Afro, they see like ultra masculine and angry, but he's very, he's just a caring, soft-hearted guy. He just wants the best for people and wants to keep people safe. And so I saw some tears. Um, <laughs> I, I cried and, and we're, we're really good now. You know, I think we've been working really hard through our relationship and we talk often. The mom, um, she also felt understood and seen, um, which, you know, I think is hard for her too, because she's never been in that situation. And so it's also really helped our relationship as well um, to be able to communicate in new ways. I think it's also this, maybe it's my own way of uh, telling them I love them in deeper ways than just saying it, is to show like, hey, I, I, I can see you, I understand why that happened and it's not your fault, you know? That's beautiful. That's, yeah. And that's the power of, of art and storytelling. You know, not not to give the, ourselves pass on the back. But I mean, that's 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 why that's why we do what we do, and 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 I'm so glad that it had a positive effect in your life, um, and that it's it's brought you together. And I do want to say, part of me, you know, I juggle as a filmmaker, feeling like, oh, like it's too personal. It's like sharing. It's like a diary entry. But at the same time, you know, you're doing this so that it, a large audience can see it and connect to it because it is universal. More more than just Asian Americans. I think it's a very human uh, family oriented and, and it's about home and sacrifice and all this stuff that I think one of the most rewarding parts of this is having other people from all walks of life say that they really connected to it and they, they resonate with many different parts of the story and how they all took something different away from it. I think that that felt very healing too, to just, feel that like our Asian American story is also much wider. It's for, it's for everybody, you know, that, that made me feel so, I just felt great. <laughs> That's the rewarding part of making films, right? Definitely. I mean, we grew up having to find ourselves in a lot of white characters and white stories. So it makes sense that they can see something of ours and be like, oh, I see myself in that too. Yeah. So that's, that's, a, that's another positive effect of, of pushing, our, or pushing our stories out there. There's definitely like a, a catharsis and some like therapy that we didn't even know that we needed as we're making these, these stories and sharing these stories. And what, what, like you said, it's so rewarding when the more specific we get with our own personal uh, experiences, um, that's actually the stuff people relate to the most, and it kind of shows that how connected we are as a, as um, as people, like you said. Well, thank you again so much, Angela. Again, like just oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to say something. I will say um, when I first started UT as an undergrad in two thousand five, you know, I was a filmmaking student, and for me, I was like oh, this is going to be impossible. I never see like Asian Americans on screen. Yada, yada, yada. And, you know, back then we didn't have YouTube, but we were like, you know, sharing video files on firmware, LimeWire, LimeWire. LimeWire, <laughs> kazaa. Oh, man. I think I know where this is going. <laughs> this guy. So um, it, it was great because that's where I saw Yellow Fever. <laughs> the, short. the short the short film the short, the short. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god I, wow the short Wang Fu short and you know there was a whole gamut of videos that y'all were cranking out and it just made it feel like it was possible so thank you for giving um hope and an anchor to telling our stories and you know i connected to them as well and and it's something that you know I really appreciate, and I see y'all just continually fighting to tell stories. Yeah, that, that's that's incredible. Uh, it's incredible, more so to me, that something like Yellow Fever could ripple down to, to, our to a show like our home here, which is an incredible piece of art. So, I mean, you you essentially are doing that for someone else now. Yes. For for our our viewers that are watching now, they're gonna see your film. Yeah. 
And I'm glad they're watching that film and not Yellow Fever. Yeah. Um, and they're going to be inspired to tell their story, and um, and we can't wait to see that. Yeah. I'm. 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 That's. That means a lot. Thank you, Angela. And and <laughs> I. I hope we can continue working together too and finding other ways. Uh, if you ever decide to come back to the United States, uh, once it's safe. But again, yeah. Thanks so much. And again, thank you for allowing us to share this film and have these conversations about, you know, so many difficult. Um, topics, mental health, class, you know, the struggle with family. So really appreciate it. Everyone that's watching, if you guys are, you know, want to know more about Angela, just be sure to follow her. Um, we'll put links below. Share this short with other people as well. If you feel like it resonated with you or someone that you know. Yeah, we just want more people to see this and, and to uh, hear about uh, Angela's work. So thank you. Thanks.